guys, my name is Nate Brown and this is my Ford E350 cutaway van conversion. Bit of a mouthful. Uh, so this is actually my fourth kind of van conversion. My first one was a big ass box truck that uh, I already got kind of pre-converted and then I added on to it and kind of learned a lot. Next was a homemade camper I built, um, all just during quarantine uh, over in Tahoe. The next one was an Econoline, um, just the extended uh, short van. Um, and then now this guy. Uh, so basically, the story of getting this is, the day I was about to get it, I was supposed to get a Sprinter van. And uh, the guy ended up bailing day of, um, just kind of flaked on me, kind of some harsh words or a little bit exchanged. And so I hopped up on Craigslist and stumbled upon this guy and it was posted five minutes prior. So I called my friend Sammy and I was like, hey Sammy, I know you're gonna drive me down to Seattle today. Uh, how do you feel about driving me down to Olympia? She was super on board, went down, checked this thing out, and it was pretty much completely untouched. Basically when I bought this van, it was just a big white box with just some terrible graphics on the side of the previous um, business. And uh, basically what I did was, it had its pre-existing swing outdoors, and I added the windows, I added this window, an electrical cabinet, um, that is accessible from the outside and as well as the door and cut the entire door out and riveted it on From there. I kind of had my like base of what I was trying to do um, So I started out with just a heavy-duty insulation um, everything is has poly with <coughs> Reflectix um, Just coating the entire thing The main like idea behind that is I wanted this to be kind of a van for skiers and snowboarders to stay warm cozy and kind of have like some good vibes in a parking lot, even during like a blizzard or just, you know, negative temperatures. So I wanted you to feel comfortable basically when making this. Uh, so for cabinetry, I kind of just laid it out as in you walk in and you have your sink system. Uh, the sink basically is set up <clears throat> where it is on a water pump and the water pump is uh, designated by a switch. So it just turns it on and off. You have two different settings. You can hear it just turn on, and it's nice to turn it off. Um, and then over here, it spans, and you have the rest of the kitchen. Um, and the main part about this is there's a pass-through door, and I really wanted to make a huge kitchen for just like kind of big old dinner parties. I feel like every single van I've ever had, the kitchen isn't quite big enough. So I have a removable leaf right here, and that allows you to pass through to the cab still with complete ease, which is one of my favorite touches with this thing. Um, if you swing out right here is basically your drawer for all your silverware, utensils, everything. Down here, you have your recycling and your trash. This would be all your food storage, would be down here. Additional plates, whatever you might need. Two cabinets right here, mostly for food. And then your fridge, your isotherm fridge. Right here you have more personal items. Three different cabinets. And all these cabinets are on what I call pissed off girlfriend proof hinges. And uh, they're all the slow closed hinge so you can't slam them. Which I think is pretty important in one of these vans. Above you got two cabinets, which these are mostly kind of closed, whatever you might need. And that is on a separate light system. Over here, you have your living area, which is basically, I kind of want to make this as open, but utilize the space as much as I possibly could. So basically you have two seats and they both have under storage. Um, and then right here is your table. The table is pull out. So basically I really wanted to make the table also turn into a couch. And I also wanted to make it so I was able to kind of be sitting right here and if I needed to get up to like grab some food, it was easily adjustable. So you're able to just have your laptop right here or you can have a huge dinner party. So basically if you take this guy out, flop it right here. these guys out open right here got two extra cushions so yeah right here you have your extra bed in most vans I had 
if I didn't have like an extra bed for uh, like friends to crash over for the night. So this is pretty crucial in this build. Um, and I just wanted to make it so it's just a multi-purpose uh, situation. You also have your toilet. Basically, this is a nature's head toilet. <clears throat> I've never had one of these personally in one of my vans because I can't afford it. But they seem pretty dang sweet. They're, uh, it's a full composting toilet and uh, basically my stimulus check funded this thing. So whoever uh, purchases the van better appreciate those Biden bucks. Swing it back in. Boom. So basically you have all your, all your uh, space is multi-purpose um, and it still remains extremely open. So for my bed, I had it uh, kind of raised to the size so I could have a pretty meaty garage, I think, which is one of the most important parts of any van conversion, especially if you're, you know, outdoorsy and like to pursue sports, you kind of want to have an area for all your equipment and kind of all of its little spots. So this is why I raised it up this high. Uh, the bed is a full size bed, but the length is actually six, four. Um, so most people can, you know, sleep very comfortably in this. Um, above right here, two cabinet setups. The cabinets, there's some stuff in there, but that is basically all your clothing. It's kind of like the his and hers cabinetry. Uh, if you swing over here, uh, you have a personal fan. And this fan is set up in every single conversion I've ever done. It's a 360 degree fan, and they usually use these on boats. Uh, it stays cool at night and also just pr uh, promotes air circulation. Right here is a reading light, which I think is pretty nifty. Um, and then right here you got your little your little fairy lights with all the quirky little Instagram-y settings, um, which I actually quite like. And then on this side you have uh, a little charging port, um, which is just via a switch right here. If you pan over here, you have another charging port, which is on that switch. And this is on the fridge, so basically if you're not using your van for a while, um, instead of just unplugging your fridge, you just flick the switch. Uh, right here is your diesel heater. Um, so all you have to do is basically press on, turns on, and uh, the diesel heater, I have it split. So it comes out, <clears throat> one is right here, and then the other one is down here. Um, pretty much in previous conversions I've had, you know, it could be 90 degrees, 100 degrees in here, but your feet are always going to be cold in the middle of the winter because heat rises. So I wanted to put the diesel heater basically at your feet and like heat up the floor, especially while cooking. Um, it's it's pretty crucial. Otherwise, you need to invest in a pretty expensive pair of slippers or something. So basically, the main electrical is set on these six puck lights are set on a dimmer, um, and these things are super cheap off Amazon. I've had them in every single conversion I've had, and it's, it's always worked perfectly. Uh, for the exterior, I have two sets of lights. One is a red running light that goes right here. Can't really quite see right now. And then on the other side, there's another red running light. So wherever you're camped out at, you can just, you know, basically either have your red lights going towards your campsite or all around you, um, which I think is, is probably one of the best things I've ever done in a van. Um, if you pan down, something that actually is Probably my favorite part about this conversion is the water system. So for the water system, I decided I've had fresh water tanks in a lot of my conversions and though they're great, it's actually really annoying to try to find uh, a hose with clean water to fill it up. Um, especially when you're in like California or kind of in the middle of nowhere, you're like, you just run into someone's yard and fill it up. It's, it's definitely not a great system. Um, and the water definitely tastes pretty janky a lot of the time. So basically what I did was I have three seven gallon uh, water tanks. And these are all can just be filled up straight from any grocery store basically that has like that glacial water. Um, and it's just super easy to fill up. And I just have a little pop top system right here. It's removable. And you just undo this guy. Pull it out, undo this, 
and then you just put that into the next bit. Basically for my diesel heater, this thing is an unleaded van, so I can attach it to the tank itself, to the gas tank. So instead I actually used a jerry tank, and the jerry tank is just fed right through here and goes uh, straight to the pump, which is externally um, mounted. I really like this because if you have a little internal diesel tank, inevitably you're going to splash some diesel and uh, your entire van is going to reek. So I actually quite like this design. If you open up here, you can latch the doors on the side, which is a nice little thing. And you have the garage. Garage, you just got a little switch right there. Um, right here is your diesel heater and it's turned on right now so you can hear it kind of going. I put it separate uh, so it's in the garage so you actually can't really hear it and it also cycles so you get warm air down here so it'll heat up your bed as well. Uh, right there is the compostable toilet which is just removable right there if you ever need to clean it. Um, easily accessible. And then right here you have his and her cabinets uh, for all your storage stuff uh, along with some hooks. You also have 120 volt right here in case you ever need to like add speakers or party lights or extend your living space to the outside um, as well as an easily accessible propane tank right here that is just on a latch system. Take it out, pull out your tank and fill it up. So basically one of the key components I wanted in this van and how I do actually all my electrical in any vans now is I make an entirely separate cabinet. Um, this like basically makes it so it's easy to work on if you ever need to tinker with some fuses or add more 12 volt or whatever it may be. It's all in one location and it keeps it really neat and tidy. Let's pop it open. So you have basically four deep cycle batteries that give over 200 amp hours of uh, power. Right here, this is connected to your alternator. Um, and that charges your batteries while you're driving. Um, everything is on its own fuse and breaker. And these breakers are pretty sweet because they're, uh, they're marine grade, so they just actually just pop open instead of destroying the fuse. Um, everything also, the solar and uh, the entire battery bank themselves is on uh, full uh, kill switches, which I think is pretty important for storage. Um, and then up here is your uh, mounted 1200 uh, watt power, or 3000 watt power sign inverter. So when uh, building out this van, it was pretty important to have uh, really strong racks because I wanted to have mounted deck up and I also wanted a really nice ladder. And basically there's no ladders that are custom fit to this. And same with the roof racks, they're super hard to come by. So I, I actually am super fortunate where one of my best friends, he owns probably the best rack manufacturer in, on planet Earth at this point. It's called Tanner Rack and it's located in Bellingham, Washington. Um, he basically custom fabbed all these, this ladder with all the treads for your feet, um, along with the uh, roof racks that are extremely important so the uh, deck doesn't fly off while driving. So for solar, basically I did 300 watts of uh, solar from Renogy. Um, they all feed in at this corner right here through these things called clamshells. These are marine grade and they basically are super waterproof um, for your positive and negative wire to feed through. Um, I built a deck basically everywhere so you can easily clean off your solar panels, especially if you are parked up at the mountain, have a big blizzard and you need to you know, have some energy. Uh, it's really accessible and you can just shovel it right off. Uh, the deck is built also around your Max Air fan. Um, and this thing is pretty crucial. Never skimp out on your roof fan, um, especially if you live in the Pacific Northwest, because if you do, you're going to get water in your van. Uh, having this one, it ha gives a rain guard. Um, so you're able to leave it open all year long and you'll never get wet on the inside. Um, and basically the rest of it is just a huge deck for beers and sunsets and taking a girl on a pretty date, whatever it may be. <laughs> well, thanks for coming and checking out my van, guys. Uh, this guy is actually up for sale. Um, if you guys want to swoop it, um, you can reach me at Nate underscore N underscore Nico on Instagram. Uh, especially if you want to see more builds kind of like this. Also, I recommend checking out my food truck I just opened up in Bellingham, Washington. Definitely stop by if you're ever in the area. It's called Sweet As Waffles. 
definitely way cooler than any van I've ever built. Uh, definitely check it out. And uh, thanks for stopping by, guys, and take it easy. You. Mm.